And we have a special treat for you to wrap up our closing session. Wanted to do something a little bit different. And it is my pleasure to introduce Pierre Campbell. He is the leading expert in simple intelligence, which is a philosophy he shares in organizations across the country. He's known for having an authentic style and a true passion for leadership, development, and coaching. He's a Queens, New York native, and he's also an empowering speaker who infuses hope, positivity, and action into every presentation. He's been called the most optimistic speaker, leadership, and personal development coach author combination today. Pierre earned the College Football Hall of Fame Award while playing for Cheney University of Pennsylvania. He also went on to have a successful career as an arena football player, <laughs> and he served as a leader and mentor at a major university before going out on his own to spread an important message. He also wanted me to share with you that the most important job he's had is waiting tables. He's always been a server at heart. So through his passion to serve, he's developed a reputation for helping leaders maximize the human potential and to enable employee engagement and customer satisfaction. And that's really why we're all here today. He is the author of Simple Intelligence, Get Optimistic, How Acronyms and Affirmations Can Truly Work to Your Advantage. So if you like what you see today, you can always continue to check out Pierre. He has his own YouTube channel where he interviews successful leaders, and they share stories and best practices. You can also visit PierreCamp.com and connect with him on social media at PierreCamp using the hashtag Simple Intelligence. And I'll send that out to you after so you don't have to remember it. So Pierre's goal is to help you become the best leader you can be through positive reinforcement. So MWHC leaders, I want you to get ready for your Pierre Camp experience. Let's go. <laughs> Anybody know where Far Rockaway, Queens, New York? Queens. What? Queens? <laughs> Queens? Okay, okay, let me stop. <laughs> okay, so real quick, Far Rockaway, Queens, New York is Queens, but it's not attached to Queens. When you fly into JFK, there's a peninsula. Everybody know where the peninsula is? Yes. Peninsula? I don't know how to explain it. Sweet. Each on one side, bay on the other side. I live right there. Okay, so it's a mixed neighborhood. We have all different types of people. But you also have rough, rough. So I grew up in a rough neighborhood. Been around different things, and God has blessed me to come through being shot at, being robbed by gunpoint, all these different things. And I'm so happy because all of that has come to a point where I can share this message. Okay? So that's where I'm from. But uh, my family, 
my mother and my father is from Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm coming down the steps. I'm coming down the steps just to, when we first when I first came in, and, and I'm like, oh man, she looked like one of my people. <laughs> translation, translation. I would say translation like on the bottom of the screen. Just, okay, well, we got recorded, but like, one of my people. So yes, we are like Jamaica. This is for her to understand. Yeah, but yeah, I think y'all can figure that out. But, so much love. There and uh, so I grew up in an environment where it was structured. And my mom, uh, you know, she was she was tough. I commend her. And I look at all of you, and I see mom. So just so you know, I'm gonna speak into your life because when I see women, I think of mom. I think of power. I think of the gifting of to be able to nurture. I mean, Rick. Where's Rick? Rick. 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 Would you like to give birth anytime soon? I mean, <laughs> I mean, nine months? You're, you're nine months? You're right here. Come on now, nine months? Uh, no. 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 We don't want any parts of it. So, Rick, you and I, just you and I, let's give them a round of applause. Y'all can keep that. You women are powerful. Listen to me very carefully. You women are extremely powerful. And it needs to be said, especially from a man, for you to hear this, hear this coming out of my mouth, that you are powerful. You are meant to be who you are. You're a blessing to the world. You're bringing in new life. And if you don't, if you don't, if you don't ever have that opportunity to bring in new life, it's still a blessing because you can be a mom to someone else. You can be a mom to your associates. Are you listening? Yes. Women, it's extremely powerful. Because y'all have something that Rick and I, we have it, but we don't pay too, too much close attention to it. And it's what? Intuition. Y'all have this gift to be able to look at somebody, walk in the room, and my wife is Kim. There's like 50 Kims in here, right? There's <laughs> like three Kims, I'm exaggerating. But, so my wife, she, her name is Kim. Thanks, thank you so much. I thank mom, I thank you my wife all the time because she gave me the opportunity to step out of faith to do what I'm doing now. And uh, I think about that. And I think about women and it's like, wow. How powerful are women? <laughs> do you know how powerful you are? I want you to do something. When you go home, and this is something that I do with my child, all right? After I give my bath, I give my bath because what? My wife said give my bath. <laughs> <laughs> I get my bath and be like, well, every, every other night, that's going to be So I need some help. Remember I told y'all? That term with two things is crazy. Anthony is a mess. And he's just like me. He's like, let's go. You know, let's go. He's always talking and, and, and engaged and stuff like that. So anyway, I get my bath. After I get my bath, I put him on the sink, in the middle of the sink, in the two sinks, in his bathroom there. And I hold him, I hold him up in the front of the mirror. Butt naked. Y'all hear me say, butt naked. Come on now, butt naked. All right, very important, very important for y'all to listen to what I'm saying. And you can do this with your social media. I don't want HR though. This is HR. All right, so, so okay, back to my story. Stop laughing. Put him on a sink. And I have him look at himself. What? But what? Then. What? Then? Right? Don't be afraid. Okay? You are who you are. You gotta look. Okay. All right. I look at the mirror and I look at him. And we're looking eye to eye. And I say to him, and this is from when we started bathing him. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. Because God made me yeah. perfect. And I said, one, and then he'll say, one, two, three, let's go. I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself, because God made me perfect. And then she go. At two years old, think about this, two years old, he'll keep going on and on. Why am I doing this? Talk to me. Build the self-esteem. Yes. 
And, and why do we need to do that with children? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so if children need that, what would your associates need? What do you think your associates need? Same thing. Your associates need the same thing. Just, we are the same people as the children. We just grew up. <laughs> we just we just come into a corporate environment and say, hey, you know, I'm not gonna act a certain way, not gonna let you know that I'm listening to top 40 in, in the car, I'm banging out I'm like oh. <laughs> Justin Bieber and uh, you know all those people listening to that in the car and then you get in the building and it's like a different person. <laughs> no, 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 no. Guess what? Be real. You're not gonna listen, be real, that's key. It's be real. This must be you, right? You all right? You all ready? <laughs> all, all, all the women close their ears. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but be real. Be real. Because that's what it's all about. It's about engaging the associate and letting them know that it's about them. So I got a leadership program, and in the leadership program, this, uh, and, and you might want, there's something that I always tell people that you can do. Be sure to capture it all. Where you want to record, whether you want to record is being recorded, I'm sure that I'm not giving it to y'all, or, or take notes. So find a way to capture messages. Find a way to capture the day. What happened today? Find a, big, find a way to be present now. Whatever you do to find a way to be present now, do it now. So if y'all can open your hearts a little bit more, I think I opened it up a little bit, but I want it to be open so we can just kind of flow. You know what I mean? And share. So leadership model. It's four steps to the leadership model. Keep on top. You got it. All right. So the bottom step is personal development. Four steps to the leadership model. This leadership model is what I do when I, when I share I, I share with leaders managers. The bottom step is personal development. Personal development is what? Anybody answer the question? Personal development. What is personal development? Education. Making yourself better, that's right. Personal development. Taking care of you. Taking care of you. Mm -hmm. Expanding yourself. That's right. And as leaders, one thing you're going to have to realize is you're going to have to take care of you. Because at times, your associates, you're like, oh, I have to take care of my associates. Take care of my associates. You have to take care of you. What do they say when you get on the plane and save the plane? You always say, in case of an emergency, what do you do first? You take care of you. You put the mask on, then you put the, you know, put the child on, whatever it is. Right? So personal development. Uh, all the educated people in the world, uh, in this room. You went through elementary school, middle school, high school. Some of you have terminal degrees. I don't know. I don't know who. Do you know where the <laughs> Do you know where the word education is derived from? The word education is derived from a Latin word. They do. And look it up. I may be wrong. You know. Right? Education is they do. Okay? Uh, and I may be pronouncing it wrong. But get the message. And that means develop from within. The word education is derived from the Latin word edu, which means develop from within, which therefore means that at its root, education means personal development. So personal development as leaders is probably your, is, is your number one step on a leadership model. And it's the number one step that's going to help you become better leaders. Are y'all getting this? Very important, very important. The, the second step is building relationships. Did y'all build relationships today? Yes. Yes? We're going to find out. Pair up the person next to you real quick. I will, before you pair up, I just want you to answer one question. What? Have you learned today that has cemented in your head from earlier, earlier uh, sessions? That's number one, okay. And then number two is what are you going to do on Monday? Because I've been to a lot of conferences, I've been to a lot of uh, workshops and different things that just like this. But then you come out of it, you're motivated, you got all these ideas. But then when you come back to work on Monday, the people look the same. They're not the same, they're not the people that's in the room right now, right? They're, they're the people that report to you. They're the patients, they're whoever it is. They're your customers. So what's the number one question? What have you learned today that's in your head? Okay, and then on 
Monday, okay, the second question is, on Monday, what are you going to do differently? What are you going to do, what are you going to implement on Monday? Are y'all getting that? So just two questions, I'm going to give you three minutes. Okay, all right. So, yeah, the accountability part, right? So everyone who, whoever you just declared what you, learned, what you said, you need to have that person's email address and phone number. You got that? And I want you to get it, seriously. This is, this, is, this is a serious part of what I'm saying. Because whatever you told the person that you're going to do, you, that person is going to hold you accountable by calling you. Forget the email, forget the, you know what? This group, yeah, maybe it's one of the two on the No, forget the email, call the person. <laughs> Beat. Come on! I'm <laughs> <laughs> just pointing the person out. That person right there. You off beat. Get out of here. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, I need four people to stand up. The leaders, how many leaders in the room? to you. This is the calling that I have, and I know that for sure in my life. So, so I just wanted to ask that question. You are my audience. You are my audience. Got it? Okay, good. That's two people. Yeah. Come on, somebody from this Come on, come on. Bring Talk to me. Well, you know, just, I'm not perfect, and I'm probably going to have some feedback on oh, what day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let me. So, 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 just so you know, everybody's everybody's on. You know, you're not alone. Is anybody in here perfect? No. Come on, tell them. You perfect? Are you perfect? Get on. <laughs> Right, you heard the resounding no, right? So everybody's with you. So when you get that feedback, receive it with love. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And everybody, everybody knows who this person is, right? Yes. What's his name? Ray. Got a lot of people know who you are. Keep me honest, though. That's right. That's right. And I would hope so. You know the melody. <laughs> What's the second question? Talk to me. Rick? What are we going to do on Monday? Yes. I'm just kidding. What are we going to do on Monday? Talk to me, Rick. What are you going to do on Monday? I have a couple of folks I need to work on how we get them re engaged. Okay. All right. Engagement is kind of difficult, right? But have you noticed something? Everybody in this room, everybody, 100% of this room is engaged. All right. So I need some accountability person. Who's gonna keep Rick to his word on what he just said? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Did y'all just figure out what I did? Come on now, y'all are leaders. Well, she's my boss. Oh, that's my boss. what I'm doing now? The person that you said, this is what I'm going to do on Monday, I want that person, and you do the same for the other person, to call, not email, not text, not call. Or if you're in a, an environment where you can maybe go out to lunch with that person, do that. And talk about the things that you learned today and how you can implement and consistently Im implement. Are y'all getting that? Yeah. Okay. You can sit down. Thank you, sir. Boss, stand up. The most important thing to your organization is what? The most important thing to my organization as a whole. Yep. Um, uh, honesty. Honesty. 
What else? Um, what we talked about, I think, just feeling like a team, being a part of the team. That's feeling right. Wrong. That's right. One more thing. Um, having fun. Having fun. Okay, let's get down to the root of it, right? Let's get real down to the root of it. The guy that's sitting right next to you. Yep. And I know you already know that. I'm not telling anybody anything that you don't, you don't already know. Everything that you said is referring to the person sitting next to you or whoever the associates or whoever reports to you. All of you leaders have to understand that. Who is your customer? Everybody. Who? Everybody. Everybody. Let me decrease, decrease a little stress because y'all leaders, I've been a manager and I, I know what it feels like. You're, you can sit down. Put your hands <laughs> Your customers are the people that report to you. Listen, hear me now, believe me later. Pay attention to, and I heard someone, I think it was Renee, it was Renee here? She probably left. Okay, so there was the, your customers are the people that report to you. I know what it feels like to be a leader and, be, and feel like this myth, I'm gonna bust this myth up, y'all ready? It's lonely at the top. Nonsense! You have a team. If you have people that are on your team, if you have people that report that you report to, if you have people that report to you, it's not lonely at the top. That is a myth of corporate America has, has brainwashed us to think well, as soon as we get into a leadership position. And for you new leaders out there, you know it's not lonely at the top. And all these people in here, they're connected to you. So you have to take initiative and connect with them. Does that make sense? And this is from the last session, so she knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so. Most important person right there and I, you already know it. like I said I'm not telling any and I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know right that's love right love y'all receive it for love yes. all right so all right talk to me what's the first one what I learned today yes first one she told me to say that she's number one I learned that number one okay all right. okay and she's not perfect all right I learned today just being around But um, just realizing that your staff, whether they've been in 20 years, 30 years, two days, two weeks, they need you. Thinking that 20 year plus, don't or less. Giving that um, positive feedback, negative feedback, whatever it is to help them grow. And um, just trying to make, can I do it in front of you? Yes, absolutely. Um, just making yourself more, make myself more available. Whether, you know, personal things you have going on, everybody has a life outside of Mary Wash, but. Just trying to make yourself available, not just of the day, but my staff is 20 minutes out of it. So trying to make that something go around. Very good. That's fun. Very good. And uh, I wanted to give a round of applause to you. You're absolutely right because you're always being watched. As a leader, you're always being watched. As a director, I have an office on the campus. I'm the campus director. And they watch when I came into work, how I came into work, how my body language, what, what, everything. You're always being watched. And your perception, I'm going to share some things from the whole idea of simple intelligence. Your perception is your reality. So if you perceive something, that, and you can't control what other people perceive, right? But you can control yourself. So you can have a seat, but great. Good job. 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 I feel like I'm Dr. Phil or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up next. Come on. Let's okay. go. So I actually learned a couple things today. Um, the first one was, you know, having all the leaders together and the different things they're doing in their departments and what's working and ideas on what we can do to increase engagement with associates. And then also how important it is for associates, whether it's good, bad, it's just one for us to grow as leaders in an organization um, to make associates want to be happy and want to come to work That's and right. to be a part of that family. That's right. What am I going to do Monday? Um, You're going to come to work? I'm going to be at work. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, you know, as we go through the um, surveys, you know, good or bad, you know, I always take my associates for, you know, everything that they do. I mean, Everybody goes to these short staff and 
you know, rough times and everything, but just thank them for what they do. And I hug them. I always hug my dad. She's Can I help a To get as soon as I went to not even that, just speaking to me. Like from the from the perspective of that's a go talk to me, go talk to me, you know, New York, you go now. I went to college, real quick story. I went to college and people were walking, I'm a football player. We went to camp and I'm 17 years old at the time. And people are walking to dinner after practice and people are coming, cheerleaders are coming, everybody's just coming this way, and they're like, hi, how you doing? I'm like, and see, in New York, you see, you gotta, think about, you gotta think about culture. You gotta think about people's people's development, where they come from, and how they are, how they grew up, and what they were taught, and, and, and just the things that in their environment, right? I'm like, and in New York, if someone said, "What's up to you, a guy?" It wasn't a chip. You know? <laughs> a guy said, "What's up to you?" And this is a 17-year-old here. It meant it's a fight. Just so you know, at that time, okay, this is back early 90s and stuff. So this is the perception I had to learn that in Pennsylvania, the people are nice. And I'm not saying the Americans are not nice, we're nice too, okay? But it's just different. The way we do things are a little bit different. And it's the same thing with your associates. You have to think about them and think about their life and what they go through and what they're going through. In the islands, we have a saying that's called, it's nice to be nice. It's nice to be nice. It's nice to say thank you. It's nice to say good morning. Don't walk past people. Look, you spend more time with the people. You know, I have to stand up for just one more second. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget about Kansas animation. <laughs> you spend more time with the people that are reporting to you, the people that are working with you, than you spend with your family members. Come on. So what does that mean? That means that you might as well be nice for your well-being. Because happiness is a what? It's a choice. It's a choice. You wake up and you say, okay, I'm going to be happy today. And you have to set intentions. I can talk about that more and get real deep into that so you can help your people. But we need to go on. Well, that's a great question about being a Philly girl, not all Pennsylvania girls. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the city of brotherly love tells the truth. You can be a better leader. Be right. So and what am I doing Monday? I'm going to set the days and times we have a global staff meeting so we can reach more people in our radiology department and not just my own um, areas that I manage. Because that is what people like last year and they need to do more about. So I know that she's going to hold me accountable. Oh, okay. I'll call her. Okay. I'll check on her. I'll okay. I'll be right there. <laughs> team that you need. That's the time that kind of partner you need. Okay? okay. Alright, y'all can go around. Yeah. So what you said about you're going to do a global steal that. You hear what I just said? When you're in the still that, yeah, not like literally stuff. Go to her person, steal something. I anyway, with my ball. I need a raise. <laughs> but what I'm saying is when you have these types of meetings, these leadership gatherings, be sure to gather, steal the great ideas and bring it back and implement them immediately. Because I'll say this. If I say to y'all, da 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 I love it. <laughs> Let me say it one more time. Da, 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 da. I love it. How did you know that? How did you know? How? How? Where's that come from? McDonald's. Brandon. So there's an old saying is from, from management is I say things over and over and over because it's like a broken record player. Anybody ever heard that term? Like management, old oh, one on one. Management one on one, I say over and over. And, and that's why, you know. But am, am I a genius to know that you were going to say, I'm loving it? No, I'm not a genius. 
there's something I wish I would have thought of this, even though I'm the acronym guy. So I wish I would have thought of this. There's an acronym I want to share with you. It's called TOMA. T-O-M-A. Has anybody ever heard of that? Oh, this is good. Make me look like a genius. That's what I'm talking about. Make me look good. Devin, I got points. Okay, TOMA means Top of Mind Awareness. Once again, I'm not going to take credit for that. I'm just going to take credit for sharing with you. So top of mind awareness. Top of mind awareness. When you repeat things to your people that report to you, meaning you did a good job today. Something as simple as that, believe it or not. Not one time is not good enough. Two times is not good enough. You have to find out how many times or what it is that motivates them. And how do you do that? conversation, you have to ask, you have to build relationships, you have to do something similar to what we just did. Building relationships is vital to being a leader. And I know some of you might not want to say it, guess what? Sometimes we have to build relationships with our boss. And I don't work for Mary Rock to Healthcare. Well, for day, I'm going to say this. So there's something called managing up. Have you ever heard of it? So it is your responsibility as a leader, as an associate, to manage up. So there's books out there on managing up. But it's simply asking and giving feedback to your manager, asking questions of your manager, and giving feedback to your manager what, what works for you. And you can use this at home too, right? This, this, this translates, it's transferable. All these things are transferable. So, you have to also tell your manager, this is what works for me. You're a new manager, uh, a new manager, or let's reverse it, right? So this person's a new manager, and now they have direct direct reports. You ask the manager, ask your direct report, hey, what, what, what leadership, leadership style fits right for you? Take the time to do that. I had to take a quick story. I had to take, a, take over a campus in Lexington, Kentucky. They sent me out there. I, I was... New to management, first time. Sent me out there, they said, fix it. My boss said, fix it. As a matter of fact, that person, y'all leader, so that person right there, that person has to go. So you've heard, I don't know, maybe you've heard that before, maybe not. And uh, I'm gonna send you out there, they need your energy, they need your passion, they need, they need you. Lexington, Kentucky, mind you, remember, listen to what I just said. Lexington, Kentucky. Okay, so I go out there, <laughs> I go out there, and, and it's like, whoa! <laughs> this New York guy, you know, who comes out there and it's like, okay, I go out there, my uh, secretary, admission secretary, that's what they call him, admission secretary, at the time, it's like really like, hmm, I don't know about this person, you know. The first day I sat with her for about two hours, take the time to sit with your people to listen. I started this before when I said you go to elementary school, but I got cut, I cut, I got cut off by something else. You go through elementary school, middle school, high school, some of you have terminal degrees. How many of you were asked or taught how to listen? That is one of the most powerful skills you can have as a leader, learning how to listen. And when you go into an environment where it's them, it feels like it's them against you, the best thing you can ever do, and this is for the leaders that need this, right, is listen, ask questions. So I asked her questions, asked her questions. Oh, we built a great relationship. A month goes by, and come to find out, I'm thinking that the relationship is good. Everything is good, you know. We have a meeting, where I always have meetings, and I talk about issues and stuff, and then she stands up, because I'm empowering, I'm always empowering women. <laughs> and we're, we have a meeting, we're sitting down, and always have the meeting before the meeting. Pick up on these little things I'm saying to you. Meeting before the meeting, meaning send an email, and these are the points that we're gonna be talking about. So we're sitting around, no tables, no nothing. Everything is open space. That's like you said, I feel like I'm open. That's right, we need to be open. And uh, she said, Pierre, you intimidate me. I'm like, me? Out of all people. Positive, you know, running around, I buy flowers, put it on her desk, all these little things. I'm serious, you gotta think, think differently. Uh, she likes flowers, bring flowers, drop it on her desk. This other guy, he likes coffee and donuts and stuff like that, give it to him. It's little, it's whatever, spend your money. You'll get it back in return. All right. You intimidate me. 
And I want to tell you in front of everybody that you intimidate me. Whoa, wait a minute, ho, oh, oh. ho. So I'm like, okay, what did I do to intimidate you? When you come and you stand at the desk, the front desk, I'm looking at it because you know how the campuses are. When you walk into the campus, there's a desk, and the admissions uh, secretary sits behind the desk. And when you walk up to the desk, that, that barrier there, she's sitting down, I'm standing up, little big, big black guy, right? <laughs> when I stand there, She says to me, every time you come and you bring like some, some applications or whatever it is, and put yourself in, in my shoes of what I'm saying when I'm saying this story. Just, just look, think of you as me. I'm going, I'm, you know, I'm giving her applications and little things like that. And can you sign this for me? Can you print out this? When you stand there and you stand above me, you intimidate me. I'm like, right. So now I have to sit down. Another two hours. But you know what? It's worth it. Because guess what? Those are my customers. The people that report to you are your customers. You indirectly affect or uh, you indirectly serve the customers that your people serve. Y'all get it? When you focus on your people, your people focus on your customers. That's leadership. John Maxwell says, everybody know John Maxwell? Yeah. Sweet, I can fly right through this. John Maxwell says, everything rises and falls on what? Leadership, I'll just say. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And I add to that, leadership at its simplest form is taking initiative. Don't glaze by what you see. If you see something with your people, don't just glaze by it. You know, oh, this person's having a bad day. No, say something. You have to be real, you have to be loving because you're there with them every day and don't think they don't know you. They know you better than you know yourself sometimes. They know you, they know when you're having a bad day. They know, remember I said they're always watching you. And if you're not in the, an office environment, I think that you said that there's an environment where there is, it's open space, they're watching you too. Don't think that they're not watching you, they're watching what time you leave, they're watching what time you come in, they're watching what time you what, what, how you speak to each other, how you speak to people. So one of the things that's very important as leaders is communication, right? I think you talked about that today. Very important. But communication with leadership, the key to communication is speaking so the other person receives what you say. For example, my wife says, can you go get me upstairs in the room and you go, go get me some water. For me, it's like, go get me some water. She doesn't do this, by the way. But if she says, go get me some water, go get me some water, it sounds like a command. You know, it's like, what? Go get your own water. You know what I mean? Person. But if she says, man, go get me some, can, you, can you get me some water, please? You see how she added that, you know, can you get, when you use pleasantries, I'm just going to add this in, in email. Don't skip that. Hi. Thank you. Please. My pleasure. All these little things Chick fil A's told us. Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I love Chick fil A. I'm just saying, when you use pleasantries and we skip it and we have the tendency to use to skip them because we're so focused on results. Right? But teamwork is the next step. Teamwork is the next step, the third step. Remember, we went through personal development, building relationships. Now we have teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. In order to have a team, and I played on the ultimate, I played the ultimate team sport. That's football. And the reason why I'm saying football is the ultimate team sport is because there is no way that you can play football. I know I'm speaking to a bunch of women, but I know somebody in here said they love football. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. All right. So, so okay. So it's the ultimate team sport, and you can bring this home to your uh, significant other, your husband, or whatever, and your son, and give them this. It's the ultimate team sport because you cannot play the game of football by yourself. That's right. You cannot do it. That's right, I feel like. That's right. That's right. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. So take this from football, right? As a quarterback, you can't snap the ball to yourself, drop back, pass the ball, and then run out and catch the ball 
and scored a touchdown and then have to kick the ball. You can't do it. So I learned something from football. In football, the coach, the manager, puts people in the right position. They pay attention. What do they do? They pra in practice, they pay attention. What does his body type looks like? He, before he even puts you out there, his body type it looks like he could be a uh, running back. So let me put him in this position, try him out there. And they say, okay, well, maybe if he's not a running back, maybe he likes to hit me. I like to hit me, so he put me a linebacker. That's the same thing you have to do. You have to find out what your people's strengths are. You have to focus on their strengths. All, when you get these reports back, this is something, this is a gem. Don't just focus on the things that you don't do well. Focus on your strengths. Focus on the things that they said that you did, you did extremely well. Focus on the things that they, that, that they said they, they want more of. We're creatures of habit. Marcus Buckingham. Anybody ever heard of him? Sweet, that might be a like a genius. <laughs> Marcus Buckingham wrote the book, Now Discover Your Strengths. Anybody ever took Strength Finders? Okay, a couple people, good. It's a very good book. You might want to go out and get Strength Finders 2.0. Tells you about your strengths. Everybody needs to know about their strengths. You know about your personality from Myers Briggs, but you need to know about your strengths. What are you really good at? Because the things that you're not really good at, guess what? You find somebody else that's really good at it, and you team up with them. Right? So that's what we did in football. All of us on the team, hey, this person's six foot six, put him at defensive end or offensive lineman because he's that big. This person's five foot ten and a half, okay, maybe he needs to play linebacker or running back, something like that. You know? So the same thing you have to do with your people. You have to pay attention because we want to move the fact that you're a manager or a coach, a manager or a leader, to, to, to this whole coaching mindset. You really want to think about yourself. Think of yourself as a coach. And really look at, look at your people as, okay, what is this person extremely good at? And what can I highlight? What can I focus on? So when you get those results back, focus on those things that y'all get. They say you do extremely well as well. We have a tendency to look at, well, if, anybody have children? Sweet, I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but we have an old tendency to look at, uh, I'll say this to look at the things that we're not doing well, like that your child brings home grades and there's uh, an A, a B, a D, an F, another F, and you focus, and this F is right there, and another F is right there, and a D is right there, and you're like, you're focusing on those things, but what if they're not gonna be a mathematician? What if they don't like science? Come on. Focus on the things that they do extremely well. Is this translated for y'all? Mm -hmm. Right? No. I'm talking about home stuff, but I wanna bring it home for you. Teamwork, that's what teamwork is all about. Teamwork makes the dream work, all right? The next step, the, le the last final step, is getting results. Leadership is all about getting results, am I right? Mm -hmm. As a manager, <coughs> your job is to do what? Get results. But it's not to get results from you, yourself, it's to get results. Your responsibility as a leader, as a manager, is now to get results through other people's performance. That's tricky. So let me tell you how you're gonna do it, okay? Just for lack, uh, just because of time, because we're gonna have so much fun, we're close to time, okay? Very close to time. How you're gonna do it is personal development, building relationships, teamwork, and that's how you're gonna get results. I'm gonna fly by that. Listen to me very carefully, I'm gonna say it one more time. How you get results with your people is personal development with yourself, personal development with your people, building relationships with your people, consistent, teamwork with your people, consistent, and that's how you get results. Does that resonate with everybody? Yes. 